زه افغانستان چې ما پرې خو دی را زه به سوال لسلم و کله ما درس ویل ده زه هغه ته تلې مکتب ته تلې ای سنه غواړم یار ما غوښته چې درس وی امرورا اول نه مورته ویل زه دغه ته غواړم درس وی امرورا اول نه مورته ویل زه دغه ته غواړم درس وی امرورا دوی ورو ورو را زه واچ ول متاقل کې بندی کړه چې امرورا Unaccompanied children come to Europe to seek sanctuary and they are often coming from countries where there's a conflict and so they're coming to seek a safer way of living. They are children who are not with an adult who's providing care to them. So they don't have a parent or a guardian who by law or custom would normally take care of them. For all the children, it's a question of that they can't be in, the, in their own country and they have different reasons coming to us. I came from Afghanistan, then I went to Iran, then Turkey, then Greenland, then Denmark, then I went to Austria, then Germany, then France. After France, I came to UK. When I left my country, uh, I was 13 years old. And uh, it was very difficult for me. I had to leave my country, that's why I came here. Because I lost my family, I had nothing left there. My life was in danger. Unaccompanied children often have very difficult journeys from their country of origin to Europe. Yeah, hello Ramadan. I come from Afghanistan. Yeah, we are here in order to come to Denmark. For little we have like this to in be to Tera, Freis Fahan to Tera. Also, we gick, uh, we go summer from Tehran to Tukil. Also, believe in on day Tukil. Also, try we go to Kreilne. Also, come we will be me me bowl or me skip. In fa han hanado, or me more way things in no yeah way ira. I have very warm and cold. What we see in our everyday work with them is that they have experienced violence during their trip to Europe, and this is uh, very traumatic for them. And it's very hard for the professionals to find solutions in order to protect these kids. During the journey, there is a lot of exploitation from uh, adults or the human traffickers. They are vulnerable because uh, they don't have adults taking care of them. Uh, and they experience a lot of uh, life-threatening situations. When I was in Turkey, before I start to go to the boat, I was very afraid. I did not know if I will be alive or die. I, I did not know. Some people, they die. They go in, into the water. It was very dangerous. Some of the children uh, tell that they are imprisoned on the journey, but uh, some of them tell that they are tortured. They tell about uh, being electrified and being beaten. One boy told me about him witnessing his mother being killed right in front of him. He said she was shot like an animal. When unaccompanied children arrive in Europe, it depends on which country they arrive in, in terms of what their reception arrangements are. Many children are, are left without very much support. The asylum process is quite complex, and many children don't understand the system. Some children go through the system quite quickly, but I think for the majority of children, it's quite a slow and difficult process. And it often means that children have a lot of mental health problems as they deal with the anxiety and frustration of not knowing that they're safe and secure in the country where they've landed. Most children have sleeping problems. Almost all of them have sleeping problems. They have difficulties falling asleep. Uh, it can take hours. Uh, and that's because they are thinking a lot about what happened, how their families are doing, how their siblings are doing, are they doing okay? 
is something going to happen to their families. And they think a lot about the future and all the thoughts come to them in the evening when they are supposed to fall asleep. They have a lot of thoughts, they have a lot of worries and they have a lot of trauma symptoms like being avoidant and uh, remembering, reliving what they have experienced. A lot of their uh, symptoms are not visible. Some of them seem to be very well functioning during the day, but they can be feeling a lot of difficult uh, thoughts and worries, and that comes to them when they are alone or, or when they are trying to sleep. So there is a lot of the symptoms that are visible, and there is also a lot of symptoms that are not visible. I went from Eritrea to Ethiopia. Ethiopia to Sudan, Sudan to Libya, Libya to Italy, Italy to France, and then to England. I thought they were going to send me back home, and I was paranoid. It was very stressful. And to wait that long, me thinking like they would give me, and you're yeah, always thinking about that, thinking about if they going to accept you or reject you. Many unaccompanied children are asked to provide documentation about either their age or their status, and they often can't do this because in some countries that they come from, there's not a standard way of recording births. Many smugglers and traffickers instruct children to destroy their passports along the journey or confiscate them along the way. Age disputes are a big issue for unaccompanied children because it it questions who they are as a person. Age is really critical to young people. It's a huge part of their identities, and it's, a, it's questioning whether or not they're actually who they say they are. Many of the children are complaining about the age assessment test and says, this is not my age. I know what my age is, and this is not the age that I have. It impacts their asylum claim because children get treated in a different way than adults. If a young person's age was not believed and they were considered to be an adult, they would typically be referred to adult accommodation and then be sent through the asylum system as an adult, which has fewer protections. They experience a lot of anxiety about if they are believed in. They experience a lot of anxiety about are they capable of telling their story in a believable way. From Kabul to Iran and from Iran to Turkey from Turkey to Bulgaria, and from Bulgaria to Slovakia, from Austria to Germany, and from Germany to Italy, and from Italy to France, and from France to England. I'm living here nearly three years, and there's lots of problems, you know. And they asked me about my age, and I told them my age, and they can't believe me. I don't know why they don't believe me. I don't understand why. I burn myself because I feel so down, scared and depressed. You know, like I was thinking about my life and about my family and everything. I don't have anyone here, you know, like my family and I like I'm not allowed to job. I just stay home, you know, like just waiting. Like I don't know what's going on about my future. So I can't do anything till I get the visa, you know. They get very anxious about uh, what is going to happen in the future. Is everything they've been through, is that uh, in vain? And in time they stop looking towards the future. They can't look forward. <laughs> Thank you. 
They are locked in a stressful situation. They are hyper aroused. They can't see things getting better. They don't know what to do. And that's toxic to stay in that situation for in sometimes years. When they come to Denmark, they are very willing to learn Danish and adapt to the Danish society. They want to be adults in Denmark and being a part of the society. They want to get a job and provide themselves. But as time goes by, they lose hope in this ever going to happen. They have difficulties learning the language if they are having a lot of mental issues. They have no contact to the Danish society and they don't have any Danish friends, so it's difficult to learn the Danish society. So there is a lot of obstacles. Man can find friends, but the 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 that is difficult is to find some good friends. For unaccompanied children, integrating into the society can have a number of barriers. Prejudice and discrimination is a key one because there's a lot of negative media around who asylum seekers and refugees are. The ability to speak the language is, is another big barrier and if there's no support to learn the language then that makes it slower for them to be able to integrate into the system. The way the system is set up, particularly in the UK, is that people aren't supported in being integrated until after they actually get refugee status. So if the asylum decision-making process takes a number of years, it could mean that they are in limbo for a number of years, and then if they finally get refugee status, then only then can actually begin the process of integration. We face many difficulties to integrate them. It's very difficult when you have children that they don't have hope, they cannot dream for next day because they don't know where they will be. It is impossible to provide services according to their needs because you don't know their needs because these asylum procedures for kids are not clear. The children need something like a life. They need to know that they have a future. And before they know that they have stable ground, it can be very difficult to treat their psychological issues. So while they are in the asylum system, they are on a boat and they don't know if this boat is sinking. And while this boat may be sinking, you can't treat them psychologically, you can't take away their traumas, because there are still ongoing traumas. One thing is, what do the children need? And the other question is, what is it possible to provide?